Hello, this is Patrick Botticelli with Colonial Airstream in Lakewood, New Jersey. Wow, what a beautiful day here and what a beautiful trailer we have behind me. This is the all new 2017 Airstream Sport 22 FB. FB stands for front bedroom. And it's a Bambi model because it has one axle. Some of the new features for 2017 that Airstream has added are aluminum bottle cover. This is a great enhancement to the trailer. It replaces the old plastic style ABS so it matches now the rest of the model line, Flying Cloud, Signature, and Serenity. Inside the aluminum bottle cover we have two 20 pound cylinders. These are five gallons a piece. Also next to the propane bottle cover we have a Zamp Solar plug. You can buy the Zamp portable panel and plug it directly into this port here, which is hooked directly to the battery for trickle charge. That will allow you to position the panel to get the solar gain necessary. So that, that is there. It's something you don't have to add now after market. One of the most obvious things you could see for 2017, Airstream has added an entry door window. And nice feature about this is it brightens up this area right here. So if you go inside the Airstream trailer, this area might have been a little bit darker in previous model years. Now it's a little bit brighter. And now it matches the rest of the model line as well. Another great feature that Airstream has added for 2017 is a deadbolt lock. Previous model, we had one lock, that would be entry door lock, which is a very secure lock. Now Airstream has added the deadbolt, which is also available on the other model lines. Up top on the trailer, Airstream added a port, which allows technicians to install aftermarket solar panels a little bit easier. There still is a little bit of work that has to be done inside the trailer with a controller and display but there's no need no longer to drill holes in the roof to run wires through. So we feel that is a great enhancement. And you'll see that on the rest of the model line for 2017. Mid-year in, in 2016 model year, Airstream has offered a wireless backup camera option, which is extremely popular. It's a Voyager wireless backup camera with a monitor that goes in your vehicle. So this trailer is equipped with that factory option. The rest of the exterior has stayed very similar to last year's model, but there are some improvements inside. So let's go around, go inside the trailer, and I'll pinpoint some of those as well. Okay. Inside, we now have an updated stereo with Bluetooth capability. So you could sync your phone with the stereo. There's a little microphone here, so if you get a phone call, you could answer it. There's a USB sync port here, but there's also USB charge ports next to. One of the little tips you want to know with a stereo like this, it has a flip down face, so you can put CDs behind it. And uh, to turn it off, you actually have to hold source in for three seconds, and that will shut the stereo down completely. We get a lot of tech support calls of customers not able to shut their stereo off. That's uh, one of the things you have to know, you do have to hold the button in a little bit longer. And just push this in to drop this cabinet back down. Another great update upgrade is the black outlinings and the curtains all throughout the front. Airstream replaced the aluminum blinds that were the head and, and foot of the bed. And we get to the head of the bed here. We have a curtain rail instead of blinds that you could bump with your pillow and knock off the track or bend the blades. So the way this system works, there's a curtain rail up top, there's a curtain rail on the bottom, just on Velcro, slide it across, snap it in place, and you can snap this side too, tuck this behind, and it gives you a very secure and private area and does not allow a lot of light through. And when you're done, you just wrap these around, just like that. And you bunch them up. I like to put it right about here. 
Another great feature, last model's year, if you wanted to get to underneath the bed, you'd open this big door. It's a detachable door, and you could slide the bins out, but there's two bins all the way in the back that were a little difficult to get to. So what Airstream did was they modified the mattress, made it a little bit smaller, and now the bed lifts up. So you could gain access to all this storage from right here just by lifting the bed up. This uh, access panel was always here, but this allows technicians to get in to do electrical service. If you never want to store anything in this compartment, it's an electrical compartment. But you see here at the foot of the bed, there's a little bumper, as well as the head of the bed. There's a bumper there that keeps the mattress away from this curtain rail, so you can bring it up and down without disturbing it. I like that feature. Uh, another uh, improvement was they improved the foam inside the cushions here all throughout the dinette for the 2017 model year uh, another nice thing airstream did there's always been an access door here to get under the dinette for storage and there's always been access panels once you lift the cushions up but they trimmed them out a little bit different they trimmed it out in aluminum with this plywood piece so you can gain access here here there's one on this side because the wheel well cuts in on half that compartment. There's no particle board in any of the construction of an Airstream today. It's all plywood with laminate. See how thick the plywood is? See it's laminated on both sides? This joint next to it, that's a pocket hole screw. It's a very secure joint. I have customers who put 10, 20,000 miles in their Airstream a year. That's a lot of miles. It's a lot of road abuse and um, they're not going to have the common problem that some people have with RVs in regards to cabinets coming apart. You know, staples give up over time. Uh, the pocket hole screw is a very robust, secure joint for long term. So we're very proud that Airstream uses that construction technique. Now the Sport is a very popular Airstream trailer for our dealership and for Airstream in general. It's lightweight, it's an extra narrow body, so a lot of mid-size SUVs could pull it easily. Uh, the actual trailer length, it's 21 foot 8 inches, and that's from the ball to the bumper. The exterior width is only 7 foot 3 and a quarter, so it's a little bit wider than an average SUV, so you wouldn't necessarily need the extra wide mirror extensions. Uh, the interior width is 6 foot 11 and three quarter. That's from this wall to this wall at the widest point. Interior height to the bottom of the AC is six foot three. That's from here to the floor. It's six foot three. You get a, another couple inches to the highest point in the trailer. So if you're six foot three or over, you just have to duck underneath that one spot. The rest of the trailer is a little bit taller. And the front hitch weight on this trailer, that's a down pressure on the back of the vehicle. That will be the dry hitch weight is 393 pounds and right now as the unit is equipped we don't have water inside we don't have our gear inside the actual weight of the trailer is 3634 pounds the maximum gross vehicle weight that's the most this weight the trailer axle system floor structure is rated for is 4500 pounds so that's giving you 866 pounds of cargo you can put inside this trailer that's a tremendous amount of cargo so you're really never going to have to worry about going over the 4,500 pounds. Uh, the freshwater tank is 20 gallons. Your gray tank is 24. That's your sink and shower waste. Your black tank, which is your toilet waste, is 18 gallons. And the water heater gives you 6 gallons continuous production of hot water. The uh, service, the service for the trailer, that's electrical service, is 30 amp. And that would, uh, you would need that to run the air conditioning and um, other things inside the trailer. We give you an adapter here at Colonial so you could plug the trailer into a regular household electrical outlet. So you could charge the trailer and run the television, refrigerator, and microwave. Uh, the, the actual air conditioning unit is a 13,500 BTU. And uh, the furnace system this is a forced head air ducted furnace. The intake is over here and it's got a duct here one in the middle of the trailer, down into your tanks and one into the bathroom. That's 12,000 BTU. 
The propane total capacity is 40 pounds. That's the two 20 pound bottles we spoke about earlier. It's got one deep cycle lead acid group 24 series battery and this sleeps one to four people. So you can put two kids here on the dinette and two adults here up front. Another improvement Airstream did for the 2017 model year is the new sink. This is a regular Moen faucet versus the fold-up faucet combination sink. And now you get a double sink with um, covers, which also double as a cutting board. It's a Utopia stainless steel sink. It's a little bit th thicker sink than most RV manufacturers use, and it's very deep. I like the depth of this. Most RV manufacturers are about three or four inches. This is about six to seven inches. There's a great amount of storage below the sink. You got a drawer that rolls out. It's a metal box drawer, three quarter extension. I'll give you a silverware organizer made out of maple. All the hardware is detachable, so you could take a door off, remove it, adjust it. It's a premium hardware. Got some more storage on this side. We spoke about earlier, this is the cutout for the furnace. There's another storage compartment here. These are all J latches. You need seven pounds of pressure to open this door, so you don't have to worry about it popping open when you're driving. Another one here. Now keep in mind, this doesn't go all the way back because the wheel well cuts into the body right behind it. This has a Cuisinart convection microwave. It's just like a regular microwave, but it has an electric convection oven inside. There's an electric element that glows cherry red, and there's a fan that kicks on to circulate hot air around your food. You can see the little coil up top, and you can actually see the little fan in the back. Right now it's packaged for towing. Two burner cooktop. This one's your high output. Left is low output. Just select which burner you would light on. Uh, put it on, put it on light, press in, press the button, it will ignite both of them, and then turn it to you want high flame or low flame. Do not cook on top of the glass. You want to make sure the glass is open, put the pot on top of here. A little spice rack behind the cooktop. Electrical outlet. This is GFCI protected electrical outlet. This has aluminum blinds in the kitchen, which you can roll up. This window opens for ventilation. It's all safety glass and it's tinted. This window opens here. The bottom portion opens. The whole middle window opens all the way out. There's an insect screen on each one of the windows. This doubles as an emergency exit so you can get out of the trailer in case of emergency. You have to have two means of egress in a travel trailer. You have some storage over the bed. You have two lights over the bed, beautiful panoramic windows. You could see all the way around. You could just lay in bed, wake up in the morning, and see the beautiful view of the campground you selected. Smoke detector in the bedroom. Next to the bed, we have another ventilation window that opens. You have an electrical outlet here down low, a little mini nightstand, an upper nightstand, USB charge ports. This is a premium pillow top memory foam mattress. Very comfortable. No need to ditch the mattress that your RV came with and buy a new one. This one is the perfect mattress for you. The decor inside uh, is now standard with ultra leather. You could pick black or tan. And this is the decor pillows that come with the tan ultra leather and the bedspread that comes with this package. There's a skylight in the galley with shade. This is an uh, inner shell. This is just, just dust. There's an exterior heavy duty shell, which gives you the thermal break. There's a speaker here. And there's also a speaker here for the stereo system. You have the controls for the air conditioning where you want the, the air to come out of. You have the fan speed. And you also have the temperature setting inside, and you could have the air come straight down or out of the side ducts. And the filter here that you have to check periodically to get the lint out of it, uh, this little screen pops down. You have a light LED light over the galley. All the lights inside the trailer are LED. Some of them are switched, your ceiling lights are switched, and some of them are point of view, so you can have one on or two. You decide. 
There is a fan system behind the refrigerator which you could decide to turn on or off depending on the temperature and the make the refrigerator run a little bit more efficient. To open the refrigerator, you push down. This is a three cubic foot refrigerator. It runs on gas, electric, and battery. So you decide which mode you want to put it on or you could just turn it on and then turn it on auto. And it will check because we're not plugged in to see if we have propane on. If we don't have propane, it will then run off the battery. Right now it's trying to ignite. You could also change your temperature setting in the trailer and go to a higher temperature if you want to get this a little cooler. LED light inside. It has a removable freezer compartment. So if you wanted to put more items inside the refrigerator part, you could unclip this top portion, slide it out, and you'll have more volume for a refrigerator. To shut it off, we're just gonna hold this in for two seconds and that will shut down the refrigerator. The advantage to this refrigerator on this exact trailer is you could have it on when you're driving on battery. Uh, all the other Airstream models that are made are either gas or electric, so you do have to shut the refrigerator off for safety reasons while you're towing, but there's no worry. The items that are in your refrigerator will stay cool for six to eight hours of driving, therefore you don't have to worry about high temperature and damaging your food. But this has the ability to run a battery, which is pretty nice to have on the trailer like this. This is the converter charger. This converts AC to DC, charges the battery. Has all your breakers, your GFCI re reset. They're all labeled here and here. And you have your 12-volt fuses for your 12-volt items. Your fan, your lights, the stereo, the water pump. That's all 12-volt. TV's on articulating arm. You just pull down this little nylon strap. And that will release it from its locked and towing position. The furnace controls here, you just turn the furnace on, turn the temperature up, the blower will kick on. It's a lot quieter now since we switched to the new furnace last model year. And that uses your propane fuel and the battery to ignite it and to spin the blower motor. Television itself is plugged in here to the electrical outlet. The coax cable's plugged in here. There is an antenna on the roof. You just have to turn the antenna booster on to take the signal from the antenna and bring it to the television. When you are not using the television, you want to shut the antenna booster off. And if you're plugged into the cable at a campground, you want to make sure that the antenna booster is not on because it will distort your signal coming in from the campground's cable. In the wardrobe, we have stored here the awning tool and the stabilizer jack crank. They're just taped together. The wardrobe has a light inside. The rod itself has these little ridges in it so your, your hangers don't slide back and forth. It's very deep. You have a shelf up top and the floor lifts up and it gains you access to maybe if you had to repair the outside shower 10 years from now. If you want to winterize it, you can get to the water pump from here. You can see the furnace ducts that go straight down into your tank. The actual black tank is in the body above the floor, so as long as you have the furnace on, the radiant heat from this will come off and prevent that tank from uh, freezing as well. But everything is accessible here. There's all the wires here, some pre-wire for solar, all set up and ready to go if you decided to get solar down the road. This has the fantastic fan with a manual lid. Variable speed control, one, two, or three. And quick release for the screen here so you can clean the fan blades. You do have to remember to shut this down when, you, when it's raining and you never want to leave that open when you're driving. There's a dry erase board, it comes with magnets and a marker here. There's also some more magnets here, you can hang pictures. These are coat hooks. There's an access panel here cut in to replace the shower faucet, or repair the shower faucet if you ever needed that in the future. There's an extra heavy duty grab handle here by the entry door. There's a rubber bumper at the top of the door so if you're on your way out and you don't duck, you don't skin the top of your head. See the light switch here and there's a second switch here that is for the little step light on the exterior that is right below the outside GFCI protected electrical outlet. There's just a fire extinguisher here by the entry door, which is RVIA code. There's an access panel here to get underneath the dinette. Magazine storage rack. 
in the bathroom. There's plenty of room once you exit the shower to get dressed in here. The toilet uh, is a Dometic a Thefford toilet. And it's got a foot pedal. You just push down halfway. You fill the bowl up to your desired height. Use the toilet and then push down all the way and it'll flush directly into your black tank. Little storage here, maybe magazine rack. You have an electrical outlet here for a hair dryer. Another thick stainless steel bowl sink. Mowing faucet, all metal, no plastic. A little mirror here with magnification. Another ventilation window. A little ledge here, so if you want to put some items here when you're not towing the trailer. This is a furnace duct I spoke about earlier that's inside the bathroom. The water heater, you could turn the switch on, that will red light will come on to ignite the water heater. If you have propane on or propane inside the tank, it will ignite. Sometimes you get some air in the system, you have to bleed it out using a cooktop. But it will try several times, and right now we don't have propane, so the red light came on to warn us that the water heater could not ignite. It's going to keep trying until... Uh, the third time it's just going to shut off with the red light staying on. And you give about 10-15 minutes, will give you very, very hot temperature water, about 130 plus degrees, so you got to be careful. If you have kids that you warn them so they don't scold themselves. You can check your battery voltage, your fresh water tank level and percentage, or zero. Our gray waste tank, which is your sink and shower, level percentage in zero and the black tank. So if the black tank was almost full, it's say 80 to 90 percent, and you'd know you have to empty the black tank. You could turn the water pump on from here, and that will give you on-demand uh, water pressure. So every time you turn on a faucet, the system will already be pressurized, and uh, the pump will then see a drop in water pressure and kick the pump back on. You have a little towel rack here on the back of the door, and inside the bathroom, it's very spacious, plenty of room. To maneuver, there's a little shower curtain that you pull across, and that'll snap in. Just make sure before you tow the trailer that you do secure items like this so they don't move around. Shower diverter, shower wand hangs up on the wall here, but you could bring it around and you could pause it once you get your desired temperature to conserve water and turn it back on, and you'll still be at your set temperature. There's a clothesline inside that clips in, and they just spin the little dial here to lock it in place. You wanna hang light items on this, so you would, I would not recommend hanging a towel or, or regular hangers, just light items. There's an ABS plastic wall. There's one piece here, there's another piece here, and it overlaps the bottom pan here. There's a little area here to store some items and a ledge if you wanted to shave your legs or actually sit down, there is a ledge inside. And this shower is actually 30% larger than the shower that's used in the 25FB, 27FB, 28W and A, 30W and A. So this is a, a very generous size shower. There's storage below the sink here. Toilet paper holder here within reach of the toilet. And the bathroom door is lockable. The dinette uh, will fold down for sleeping for two kids. And uh, you've seen this demonstrated in some of my other videos. But what you do is you pull the clamp. Okay, that will allow this telescopically to push up and down. And there's a release lever here on the back that will allow the table to slide. So if you wanted to get in this corner, okay, you could bring the table like this. Get in, sit down, and bring the table right towards you. This is a very clever design. Now, a lot of people I see use this in many different ways. So if you want to get on the inside here, you can do that as well. And now you're facing the television. But when you want to fold it down into a bed, <clears throat> the best way to do it is to bring it out like this, push down. Then you just lift up on the left and right cushions. You get them above. And this prevents you from having to undo all the cushions. Lock this in place. And you just grab this piece and this piece and squeeze them in the middle. You to remove these little corners and the side rest. 
can make this into a bed. That easy. Did it with one hand. But I love the new cushion material. They did a big improvement this year. It's a little bit better density foam. A little bit of memory foam in it. They did that improvement on a lot of the models and it's also now in the sport. Let's take a walk outside. All the lighting is LED on the exterior of the trailer. Airstream recently achieved the Emerald rating for their trailers. That's uh, a certified green, a TRI, TRA certification. They look at the production facility, the product itself, everything about it, and they rate it based on how green it is, and Airstream just got the highest achievement. Entry step lifts up and pushes in to store when you're towing. And there's stabilizer jacks all four corners of the trailer. That's gonna take that bounce out of your walk once you're parked at a campground. They're not used to level the trailer, they're just used to stabilize the trailer. LED taillights, license plate bracket with a light, little reflectors here in the back. And unfortunately, you cannot use the bike rack accessory on the 16J Sport Bambi, as well as the 22FB Sport Bambi. It's accessory only available for Flying Cloud Series and up because it has the rear structure extension for the back bumper that the bike rack is, is needs to mount on. Up top here, that little dome, that is actually the omnidirectional television antenna. This is your city water connection. This has a water pressure regulator built right into it. So Colonial gives you an RV starter kit with a hose that hooks directly in here. And you don't have to worry about when the campground's water pressure gets too high at night of blowing out your plumbing, you're protected right there. Don't ever get this confused with this. This is a uh, black tank flush. Because your black tank, when you pull this cap off here and snap on the waste hose that Colonial gives you, you're always gonna empty your black tank first. That's your toilet waste. You pull this straight out, now you have toilet waste coming through your hose and discharging into the campground's dump station. You're always gonna follow through by pulling your gray tank straight out, and that will be your sink and shower soapy water, your toothpaste water, and that will clean out your waste hose a good amount. If you're ever doing this at night, there is a little light out here that illuminates this area so you can see what you're doing. But to take it a step further, Airstream builds in a black tank flush. This is a sore flusher. And basically, you just have to make sure that your black tank valve is open before you ever hook up a garden hose to this fitting. Because inside the tank, there's a wand under pressure that will spray the walls of the tank down to get the residual waste out. You want to exercise that after you're done with your trip and you're potentially putting away in storage, you want to flush the tank out to get rid of the tank odor. I've had many customers over my 14-year career with Airstream accidentally hook the city water connection to the black tank flush, fill up the tank, overflow the toilet, or actually have water shooting out of the top of the trailer through their stack. So you just want to be very careful before you hook up to any of these to make sure you're hooking up to the correct one. Outside utility shower, this has hot and cold water. On the 16J Bambi Sport, it has a door like this, but there's no faucet inside because they actually, you reach through and grab the shower faucet, the same faucet you'd be using to take a shower, you could grab and pull through and use outside. But this one actually has its own hot and cold and a little wand that hangs up here. Has a TV satellite connection, so you could hook up to campgrounds cable connection or hook a portable satellite dish outside of the trailer and then bring your receiver from home, hook it up to the back of the TV, and now you have satellite on the road. 30 amp power cords included. It's a 25 to 30 foot power cord, and uh, that actually just plugs in, twists, and there's a lock, and whether it's still lock, that locks it in place, and that plugs directly into the campground service. That's included with every Airstream travel trailer. This is a refrigerator ventilation system that allows air to circulate properly behind the refrigerator. There's a tremendous amount of heat in an absorption refrigerator that um, needs to be vented properly. Because this trailer has a half height refrigerator, there's two vents. On a full height refrigerator, you actually see another vent all the way up there on the roof and no circulator fan. But this one does have the circulator fan inside. This has the Goodyear Marathon 225-75 R15 inch load range D tires. You wanna check your tire pressure before every time you tow. And you also wanna check your lug nut torque. It's very important to check your lug nut torque. You also, on a sport series, you have to repack the wheel bearings every three to 5,000 miles. 
and it has the uh, never adjust braking system which is self-adjusting but you still need to have the brake shoes clean periodically and inspect it for stress cracks. There's a rubber torsion axle system so there's very little movement up and down and the trailer literally hugs the road. There's less moving parts so there's nothing that could potentially break or wear but in the 20 to 30 year time frame you do want to have an axle inspection done to make sure the rubber torsion axle is working properly. The whole underbelly of the trailer is completely enclosed, wrapped up in aluminum, completely sealed. Anything that's exposed is exposed because it's required to. That is the actual propane line and they have PEX tubing that slid over top of it so it's not actually a water line you're looking at. This is actually the fresh water tank and it has a drain built into it to drain the tank down when you're done. It sits below the floor, but it's actually heated off that furnace we saw inside. This is the furnace discharge, so you want to make sure you don't park the trailer close to any combustibles. And the 20 gallon fresh water tank I spoke about earlier is a lockable potable compartment that you could open up, take the cap off. Stick your, gar your hose, not your garden hose, but the fresh water hose that we give you, a surgical vi vinyl hose inside, and when it's full, it spits out a re relief valve here on the side. These are different windows that Airstream has in the Sports Series than they would have in the Flying Cloud Series and up. These are purchased windows. This is the manufacturer. Airstream buys the window, installs it. When you go up to the Flying Cloud Series and up, it'll have a different style window which actually Airstream manufactures themselves. So there's quite a bit more cost involved in making these porthole windows and a stacked window like this. So that's what keeps the price level down on the Sport drastically. The water heater, this has an access panel so you could drain it down and perform service inside here, but you never want to store items inside that compartment. This is the VIN plate with the tire pressure recommendation, the tire size, rim size. The frame is power coated black, has a quick disconnect for a low pressure grill, one group 24 series, battery, lead acid battery, manual hitch jack up front, coupler that slides forward and lifts up to release. Trailer breakaway cable in case the trailer ever comes disconnect from the truck. This will pull out and activate the brakes. Never, 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 I've seen it happen so many times, never use this as a park and brake. It will drain the battery very quickly. It could burn the magnets out on the brake drums. And if the battery then drains, the trailer will probably roll down the hill that you were trying to prevent it from rolling down. <clears throat> on the top of the trailer, there's a white coating on top of the aluminum which reflects the sunlight and allows a great adhesion point for the seals that Airstream has to put for all the protrusions on the roof. There's also a 3M film here on the front of the trailer that protects the trailer from rocks and dust and sand as you're driving on the road. And because it doesn't stick out much further than the vehicle itself, uh, it's not necessary to have the heavy duty stainless steel rock guards that the other larger models have. You could put them on as accessory, but it's not a common upgrade that people do. Solar stone guard on the front lifts up. Once you get it to the height you want, you could spin the neural knob and lock it in place, and that will allow you to open up the window behind. Just want to make sure you put your tethers on before you ever tow the trailer to prevent it from flipping up. And these curved pieces actually have a Phillips head screw that you could twist and turn and slip this open and then you could lift the whole entire rock art out of this slip, slip hinge so if you wanted to clean the glass but you never want to tow the trailer with those off. This compartment's lockable. It's got a, a pressure lock. See how it squeezes it nice and tight up against this gasket here. It's weather seal lockable. Vinyl flooring throughout. There's a light inside this compartment so you can see at night. Here's the power cord that comes with it. And look how far it goes. It goes all the way to the front. And you can see they didn't skimp here either. This is all plywood construction, pocket hole screws. Very, very secure. This part here is carpeted. This is a sport medallion that comes with the trailer. The awning goes almost the whole length from cap to cap. It's metal wrapped. And there's a very specific procedure that we're going to teach you 
when you get your air, Colonial Airstream former orientation. We do a hands-on orientation with every single one of our customers on site, right at our dealership. After you purchase the trailer, we'd have it set up, plugged into our building, we'll have water on board. We're gonna have a technician spend a great amount of time with you, showing you each and every item, how they work. Make sure you're satisfied with every specific item in the trailer and a complete understanding how they work before you, can leave, before you leave the dealership. We also welcome our customers after they purchase the trailer and after they complete their orientation to stay that night, try everything out. Any questions that come up, we could answer them and, and, and take care of them for the following morning for you. This little device here is the entry door latch. This keeps the door open and keeps them from swinging around on a windy day. You want to wax the trailer at least once a year. Keep it away from road salt as much as you can. Clean the road salt off as soon as you can. If you're parked by the ocean, you want to wax it several times a year. Clean the bugs off the front of the trailer after you're done with your trip. Those acids inside the, the bugs, you know, they'll eat right through the clear coat if you leave them on for a long period of time. We'll do that to your car and we'll do that to your trailer. This beautiful extruded aluminum belt line protection gives the trailer a nice touch. It also protects that center line of the trailer. Heavy duty aluminum grab handle here on the side of the trailer. Love the screen door. I love showing the screen door off. It's all TIG welded. The hinges are stainless steel hinges. They have six rivets on each hinge, so it's very secure. As long as you don't use this as a crutch to get into the trailer. Man hours. There's eight man hours in every single one of these doors. A lot of time spent putting this door together. But this door is designed to last a lifetime of the trailer. Have a heavy duty gasket here. Look at the hardware they use. Look at the size of the rivets. Very secure, very robust. Inside is all clad in aluminum. It's insulated. And listen to the... Wow, I love that. I just love how sturdy this door is. And see the frame here? The frame is all TIG welded and very secure. This is all extruded aluminum, very thick gauge. This little ramp here allows you to sweep the trailer out and, and uh, get rid of the debris you pick up to the campground. They also have grip tape here so when you're on your way out you don't slip out of the trailer. Look at the extruded aluminum gutter rail right over the door. That prevents sheathing rain sliding down and potentially getting inside the door, or light rain if you just wanna leave the screen door open and this door this way. This is all weatherproof, so you don't have to worry about that getting wet, but that will prevent the water from getting inside the trailer because of that little gutter rail. There's a lot more we're gonna share with you in the former orientation, but I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the 2017 Sport Bambi 22 FB here at Colonial Airstream. Our website is www.colonialairstream.com and our telephone number is 800-265-9019. If you're interested in purchasing this trailer, please call me. My name is Patrick Botticelli, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it. I'll see you soon.